Hi guys, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to play piano arpeggios with a lot of character, emotion and dynamics. Okay, And we are going to use the basic properties of music to achieve this or I would say sound in general. Volume control, duration control and we are not going to mess with pitch in this particular lesson. On our YouTube channel, you will find a lot of lessons on arpeggio patterns where in one video, I'm covering about, I don't know, 10, sometimes a lot more patterns, different styles and different left-hand patterns, right-hand patterns. In this lecture, we are going to just keep one consistent pattern going. It's not about the pattern. So the pattern would be a pitch orientation of notes, right? It would be... That's one pattern. That's one more pattern. It's another pattern. So we are not going to look at too many patterns. We are just going to say if you have a pattern of interest, how do you give it a lot more character, energy and dynamics? Okay. So before we get started, it'll be awesome if you can consider hitting that subscribe button if you haven't already and turn on the bell icon for regular notifications and my handwritten notes for pretty much all the lessons that we do on our YouTube channel are available on our Patreon page. You just have to head over there for a minimum monthly subscription amount. You'll get my handwritten notes, staff notation, MIDI files, backing tracks, lot more and also the chance to interact with me in person over workshops and private lessons. So let's get cracking. So I'm just going to take one chord and one pattern, maybe two at the max, but let's not take too long with patterns. So I'll take an A major chord, A major, fairly simple, A, C sharp, E. And we'll maybe if you're new to the piano, maybe you can do this pattern. That's just going up. High, middle, low, middle, high, middle. That's pretty much it. You can even do low, high, middle, high, low, high, middle, high. If you're not so much of a beginner, if you've played for a while, you can probably try this pattern. Just add the octave. Dum, dum, octave. Or else. So this pattern. And how do we give this pattern an upgrade? Okay, so that'll be one, three, five, three octave, five, three, five, or sa ga pa ga sa pa ga pa sa ga pa ga sa pa. Or you can do the L H M H as opposed to L M H M. L H M H octave hmm. and the octave is not really a new note right it's the same as the leftmost note or the low note which is why I sometimes use a low apostrophe in my notes while writing so assuming you got that either that pattern and I'm showing it with both hands because if you're accompanying your right hand's going to play pretty much the same pattern if you're doing solo piano arrangements the left hand's going to take up the pattern so throughout the lesson I might be playing it with both hands or I might be playing it with either hand it doesn't matter what matters is the way you play the arpeggios to add the flavor the music needs okay so this is our bass point or our default arpeggio state. Get this nice and comfortable. Now obviously you might want to practice with a metronome. Obviously you might want to practice with uh, a backing track or a drum track or something like that to tighten your timing. But assuming you've done all that and you're ready with a very consistent performance, this lesson is about then what or so what if you're playing the arpeggios perfectly you know there's a lot more you can do to make it stand out from a crowd if you're if you are among maybe 100 people who can do this i would want you to be in the top uh, five percent of that hundred that should be possible if you stay tuned through this lesson so first off hold on to one note for dear life so i would st either hold on to my low note if it's an arpeggio starting from the low or i would hold on to the high note if the arpeggio starts from the high so check this out so what's happening here is for the entire duration until this note recycles itself I'm holding it down with my thumb 
So it's almost two voices now. You have the potential to even float this around. Do, 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 do. So you have that control. So this will also improve your finger independence and it will make the arpeggio sound a lot better. So, so this is the basic one. You can also do at the octave. And if ever you start with the high note, maybe this pattern, then you would hold on to the high note. High, low, mid, high, middle, low, middle, high, middle, or high, low, middle, low, high. So I'm sustaining that. Sometimes we might tend to whack that a bit harder, which is also cool. But for now, you can just make it a bit longer. as opposed to something like this which is something out of a DAW MIDI pro, uh, role which you might program which is why programming notes through these MIDI DAWs are absolutely useless when you can absolutely play it on your own. So let's compare and contrast this is with me holding that top note versus just normal default legato. This is default legato, where it's a lot more perfect and robotic. Every note was at the... Now, you find the top note lingering on. Now, basic default. So this pretty much sounds like any other, you know, a DAW piano roll which you program. If you draw the notes with a mouse or type it out, you know, it'll end up coming like this. Pretty emotionless if you ask me. So, so now with this technique, you're emphasizing on the topmost note or the bottom note. Hold the bottom. Some of you might be thinking, am I using the pedal? Not yet actually. The pedal's off. If I extend, expand the arpeggio, I'm still holding it and sometimes I might like to to cascade or linger on other notes it doesn't have to only be the root you know I can do this creatively see now I'm holding the sa and the ga the root and the third isn't it now only the root now root and the third there we go. Maybe something from the top. Holding the pinky. This is another nice option. You could slam the A and the A with the pinky and the thumb so it becomes a very strong A, a strong root. Of course, it doesn't have to be the root. It could be an inversion of the chord, isn't it? This would also end up being pretty melodic in nature. You can move that top note. So it makes it sound better, but the technique also gives you the confidence and the coordination on the tools required to take this to town when it comes to building a melody or boosting your creativity to actually compose using this uh, mechanical skill which you've developed okay so the other thing goes without saying you can stress on the top or the bottom note so we have made the top or the bottom note longer for a start or you could also make it a, a tad bit louder in comparison with all its other neighbors neighbor tones so So you could stress on the bottom note as I'm doing here or if you change your arpeggio pattern to something starting on the high, you can stress on the high making it slightly louder, not too loud so as to confuse people or shock people, you know, slightly louder would be nice. 
if you want to you can also use the whole technique which i gave you earlier and another interesting thing would be to stress on other notes it does you can keep the pattern see now you're introducing the ands and and you're making the music a bit more syncopated and four and one and two. maybe i'll stress on the pinky now now the middle or every alternate one maybe chord this is not only improves the character and the overall human emotion which you're bringing to your performance it also gives you a lot more control when you're practicing the piano otherwise you'll tend to you know play your arpeggios if i'm playing it like this for instance it doesn't sound good it will sound good at rapid paces when you are able to think of each note mo moving uh, side by side you know so 2 so 3 4 so to get that speed it will be nice to stress on a certain note so that becomes your anchor so to speak so even at rapid faster speeds like if i play it without the anchors i tend to speed up i tend to slip and make mistake so so stress on one note or whichever note maybe we are going to look at this in a chapter called accents very soon in our lesson so stay tuned now one obvious thing you can do with your arpeggios assuming you have the same pattern over the entire chord progression is to play around with the combination of legato and staccato now we've already seen legato with a hold here and there maybe bring in some staccato as well so for staccato i'm flicking my fingers towards the palm that tends to work for me some people tend to lift their arm off the piano i don't recommend that maybe only when you're playing a stack of notes when you're playing chords it's okay to lift like this but if you're playing single notes and you want a staccato without too much of pain flick it towards you some people complain and say oh the weighted keyboard is a lot heavier to do this i would argue the weighted keyboard will allow you to do this the other non weighted keyboards you 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 will not be able to play staccato itself you know because it's so slippery and rather annoying if you ask me so staccato there's also a little bit of stress see boom boom ta 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 and you can combine staccato with legato same pattern just those these two chords also you observe i've just played around with the pitch of the arpeggio i took one here versus there it kind of adds another kind of contrast and i think the word which i've not used in this video which i probably should have used a few more times to drill it in is contrast you're always trying to achieve contrast when you're playing the piano that's what makes you stand out from the crowd so to speak or in today's day and age stand out from a uh, an a rather useless midi role way of doing things which is another thing i'm trying to a uh, propagate in this lesson uh, learn how to play piano if you're a electronic music producer or anyone who's starting off using a computer learn how to play the piano don't don't get into drawing notes you might it, it'll be faster to actually play them if you ask me
using a MIDI keyboard, of course. Okay, so staccato legato achieves a certain amount of contrast. Now, the last couple of points are going to be very, very important, but will take a little longer to develop than what I told you earlier. What I've already said so far, hold on to one more, hang on to it for dear life. Then stress on certain notes. The top note or the bottom are very common depending on your pattern. Then we've looked at legato versus staccato playing. Now, this is something which might take you some time but might end up happening really easily depending on how you look at the process. You have to look at it as a very organic way of playing the arpeggio and a very natural thing. And the most natural thing that comes to us is breathing. So if you play the arpeggio and focus on your breathing, right now I'm breathing randomly, but if I time my breathing, breathe out. See what happened there? The volume changed. And the volume change occurred in the most natural way possible. It was so natural, I didn't even know what happened. Well, if I hear this back, what I'm tending to feel is when I breathe in, the muscles are kind of making it sound a bit louder because they are getting a bit tense, right? It's the same thing with other activities like yoga. So if you breathe in while you play the arpeggio and time your breath, musically time your breath, right? I'm not trying to kill you. I'm just saying breathe in but count four. Something as simple as that. So one... One, two, three, four. So maybe by the time four beats finishes, I would have taken a full breath in, I guess. Now I'm breathing in and out pretty fast, but if I take a longer deep breath in, there we go. I have I've taken up in taken up enough of air in. Now I have to uh, breathe out. <clears throat> So you release the volume out, so to speak. So you're bringing in the volume, you're enhancing the volume or releasing it. Almost like an accordion player. It just happens as you play, so to speak. Right? So breathing, not only for playing arpeggios, for, when you do anything on the piano, your dynamics just changes beautifully well. In a sense, you'll, you're not even in control over anything. The music takes over. Okay? So... Time your breath. It's as simple as that. So you can do simple exercises like two, three, four. Let's say I'll breathe fully in at four and breathe fully out uh, the next four. Also, when I breathe in, I tend to move my shoulders. That tends to give me a bit more of a physical reaction to the whole process. So that it automatically affects the sound I feel. Out, in, out. In. You can do a lot of things alongside the breathing. You can move your shoulder. You can also, you know, open your, close your eyes and gradually open it. It works for some of some people. You can also make a weird gesture as the volume gets louder, and then reduce that gesture as it gets softer, so to speak. I'm not going to demonstrate that for you. I don't think I have a lot of weird gestures to offer. So breathing is definitely important for natural dynamics. Now, there's another thing which you need to actually work on. This is not going to be very natural. It's the idea of developing accents or changes of volume at certain points of the performance at will. So you need to define a pattern, a hit point, or the, the points of interest and whack those notes a bit stronger because you're not supposed to change the arpeggio, at least for this lesson. So if you take this drill, it's pretty straightforward. Now, what if I say one and two and every one, the and of two and the on of four, I'm going to whack it a bit harder. One and two and three and four and one and two and three. Four. Let me do it with a simpler one first. One and two and three and four. That's just three notes. One and two and three and four. 
So I am now stressing on the end of the two. As much as possible, try to keep your original pattern. That tends to be a bit tricky now. One and two and three and four and five and four and four and one and two and three four. So this I would call this as the thresio hit points because one and two and three. That's a thresio, isn't it? One and two and three and four and one and two. So. Same pattern. If I did not accent. It's back to that smooth sailing performance with the accents. The way I also look at accents is it's change with respect to what's before it and what's after it. So in this case, there is that change. There is one property of music which got altered. That is volume, isn't it? One and, and uh, loud, 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 loud. loud. Of course, you can reinforce it with your bass. But as a practice, I'd encourage you to first get it with one hand or both hands. So that's your thresio, as we call it. You can also do other grooves like. It's a song clave. One and three and four and one and two and three. One and two and three and four. One. You can find the notation in our Patreon page as well to help you learn. One and two and three and four and one and two. As much as possible, keep the pattern the same. Something like this. Your song clave, or you can do random. You can just say, "I'll I want to accent at the three, three, one, or maybe the three and a half, three and." or maybe the four. Or maybe the end of the four. Pretty tricky to keep the pattern going, so you need to practice. This is not going to be very organic, like I told you. Breathing is, it doesn't get more natural than that. This needs practice. So give yourself a few challenges. Start with the ones we have. So I have one more point for you to make your arpeggio playing have a lot more color and a lot more, uh, you know, bite, so to speak. This is a feature pianos automatically give us. That is the sustain pedal. Now, the challenge here is you don't want to sustain or push the pedal down and just get it to sustain for an infinite period. Because then if you have to tackle a new chord, the old chord is also muffled up. You know, it's all sustaining. So you need, if ever you use the pedal, which, which is now, you would need to... Lift it before the next chord. Lift it before the next chord. Do whatever it takes so that the previous chord doesn't eat into the next chord. So what the pedal, you might argue then, why do I need the pedal? What is it doing? Well, what it does is it adds a certain amount of harmonics because the piano keys will start resonating with each other. They will provide, and when they resonate, they will build up some harmonic content, which anyway the piano was doing, but now it enhances those harmonics. And that's what the sustain pedal will end up doing on, on a real piano. And now on keyboards like what I have at any digital piano, you would have a very good approximation. You also have different settings on the sustain pedal. So you can have full on sustain or else part sustain. So it depends on the pedal you have and the keyboard manufacturer or the keyboard you or the digital piano you have with you currently. Okay. You may, if you're looking to buy a new piano, you might want to consider all these features. Okay, guys. So this whole lesson was assuming you have one arpeggio pattern or assuming 
you are one of those guys who wants to go the lazy route, uh, so to speak. At least I call it that and draw the notes in a computer and then copy, paste, drag it like a million times. Well, it might you might think you're a cool person or you might think you're faster, but the point the point here is a normal piano player who's played and has worked hard for about a year can can not only sound better than an electronic uh, midi roll he'll also be faster he'll be probably 10 times faster even a new guy okay so if you're thinking about you know <clears throat> daw midi rolls think again learn the piano play it with a lot more intensity get, dedicate time to practice the instrument and Try to get your arpeggios to have human character, human personality, emotion and a lot of dynamics which is change over time. This doesn't only apply to arpeggios, it could apply to, to anything. It could apply to a chord pattern, it could apply to a melody line. So hopefully these techniques would help you expand your piano playing and, and get you into that you know 5% or 10% of a crowd where you have already a group of about 100 pianists, how do you stand out from that crowd? So these little things matter a lot. Hope you have fun practicing these approaches on the piano. Try it out. Let me know what you think in the comments. And as always, stay tuned to our channel for a lot more. If you haven't already, there's a subscribe button and a bell icon which you can touch for regular notifications. We will not spam you. We just release regular lessons twice a week and riffs also which happen daily. So you don't want to lose out or miss out on anything. Thanks a ton for watching the video. Cheers. Catch you in the next one.